welcome to Fuel by Intention, where we talk about faith, family, finances, fitness, and fun. This channel is sponsored by Bynum's Business Solutions. In today's video, we are going to talk about Chris and Paige. We finally get to the part where Paige finds out that Chris has a baby on the way by his ex-fiance. So let's talk about it. excited we finally got to where we wanted to be if you did not see my prior video manifested by God please go watch it so that you can know where we are and how we feel that Paige should respond to this particular news and I'm saying we because I'm hoping that some of you guys agree with me that she should walk in faith with God if she believes that this whole relationship was manifested by God and now she is at this point, whether she's in his perfect or permissive will, we're here now. We are gonna go back a little bit just to kind of catch up on some of the things that have happened in the prior episode, but I'm strictly gonna focus on Chris and Paige. The, when I left off last time, they were getting ready to get married. So we did see them get married and it was very interesting because I do know since we're on like episode four or five now, I'm not sure, but we do know that he was not physically attracted to Paige when he saw her at the altar. Because I do believe that he did not find Paige attractive because of colorism. I think that, you know, in our country, we do not see, and I'm saying we, I keep saying we, but you know, of course I'm African-American and I'm dark skinned. So I don't, I think I'm beautiful, but in America, Dark-skinned African-American women are not seen as the hallmark of beauty. And I do believe that Chris did not find Paige attractive either. It's and or either. Either because she was not thin enough or that she was not light enough or both. When he saw Paige and he cursed under his breath, Paige was... Paige was a hundred, Paige was a hundred miles away, a hundred feet away. So he couldn't see the features of her face or anything, anything like that. The only two things that he could tell from that distance is that she was dark skinned and maybe that her, what her size was. So I do believe that he does not find Paige attractive because of her being dark skinned and possibly because she is not stick stick skinny as a lot of a lot of things that men like. However, I don't fault Chris for not finding Paige attractive. I think that she is beautiful. I think that I actually believe that Chris and Paige, they look similar in my opinion. They're both dark skinned. They both have very prominent African American features. Um, and, you know, and I think I can say that because I feel like I do too. Like Paige doesn't have that skinny little, you know, petite nose. She has a African, she has African American features within the facial, which is then her facial structure. But I think that Chris does too. I think that they look very similar, which is very interesting because you know, when people are married and they begin to like look alike. <laughs> <laughs> I actually believe that that would happen very quickly for Chris and Paige because I feel like they have similar features anyway. But I don't think that it's a negative thing that he did not find her attractive. You got married at first sight. A lot of times when we see somebody that we do find attractive, we find them attractive solely based on looks. And maybe they haven't even said anything, but you know, you want to talk to that guy because he looks good. And a lot of times you meet him, you begin to talk to him, or you're in a relationship with him, you don't like him anymore because once you see the true essence of who he is, then the looks doesn't matter anymore and then you need to move on. So I really think that that can happen for Chris and Paige. 
And because we're farther into the episode, I think it is happening. I do think that he is seeing Paige for who she is, who the inner beauty, who the person she is on the inside. And then that brings out a different outer beauty. And you do look at them in a different light. I feel like Chris is getting a lot of slack that he, um, a lot of, not slack, but a lot of people are condemning Chris because he does not find Paige attractive. But Brianna, her thing was all about looks too. She wanted her man to look this way and have a beard and look this way. And then even in her reception, her and her friend went through, you know, well, he's this, check. He's this, check. He's this, check. And it was all based on looks. So I really don't have a problem that Chris does not find Paige attractive. I don't think that Paige should um, abandon the relationship because of that. Um, but I do think that maybe his, I feel like he was trying to like be nice about it. Um, and, and then his delivery just, you know, I don't know. We'll talk about that in a minute, but they're at the altar. She can sense something from him because she says that he didn't look at her, but I didn't really find that. I didn't really like that didn't bother me that he didn't look at her. He don't know her. So he could have just been, you know, I don't know. It's kind of weird just to stand there and look somebody you don't know, like dead in the face, but you know, we do find out he may not have looked at her because he didn't find him attractive, her attractive. I do like that um, his minister married them because if they do stay together, then it's just better for them to have that kind of history that their pastor, because I'm assuming that if they do get, to, if they do stay married, that maybe they would go to his church and, you know, then it's like their pastor married them and instead of just any old pastor or stranger, and they could really have that particular um, memory. I did like that the dad, when she came down the aisle, that the dad was like, oh, you know, she's beautiful, you know. I mean, I thought later he was a little creepy, but when she first came down the aisle and he said that she was beautiful, I, I thought that was nice, only because I know, like, when they watch these things back, you know, I'm glad that she has something positive um, that somebody said about her. Also, in when the family was talking to about Chris and they told Paige about Chris and you know they made him look like he just was into money and stuff like that and he actually turned around and was like you know who said that um I thought that was interesting that he was kind of like you know I don't know he was taken aback from what it says but you know they talked about the honeymoon baby again which Paige's friend Paige kind of laughed at it in my opinion but Paige's friend Chris's mom and Chris's mom, Paige's friend and Paige's mom. Oh my God, they were just, they, neither one of those, like when they panned the audience and they showed them, they were not into that statement at all. They were kind of like taken aback from it. So I thought that that was like really interesting and very telling because Chris's mom, you know, wasn't into that statement as what well either. At least that's what it looked like. Um, the expression on her face looked like she wasn't really like into it. So I thought that was funny. And then I really don't have him. I don't really have a problem with him talking about the honeymoon baby. And I, maybe I'm taking it the wrong way. So you guys can let me know if I'm taking it the wrong way. But, you know, I'm coming from a Christian perspective and I am coming from believing that both Chris and Paige are Christians. And a lot of times in the Christian community, we do believe that you should only have children in marriage. And I don't really see a lot of guys who just like long for children. And it really looks like Chris longs for children and in his mind, which we see he didn't espouse to that teaching, but you know, he feels like it's in the context of marriage. So when he gets married on his honeymoon, he is gonna have these, you know, honeymoon babies. That's kind of how I took it, because if you grew up in the church or anything like that, you know, that's what, well, that's what the Bible says. So that's what they, they teach. That is what the Bible says, that we are supposed to have sex and babies and all this kind of stuff in marriage. So I really take it that way. I don't really take it as a negative. Um, I do wish that he would have lived that out. Like, I would prefer for him to have a honeymoon baby than to have this. Um, baby that is actually on the way that is, you know, six months, six weeks outside of marriage. 
And I actually do believe that they would have had a better chance and maybe they would have made it if this whole situation um, didn't come up. Because I do think that it just really makes you have a crisis in terms of what to do because you got two forces like pulling against you. But I didn't have a problem with him not thinking that Paige was attractive. That's the gamble that you're going to take when you get married at first sight. Like you don't get to vet the person. So, I mean... You know, I mean, we've seen it in the past where other people are not attracted. This is my thing. They need me to add, they need to add me to the panelists. So Pastor Cal, if you're out there, you need me to add, you need a fourth person, a first four, fourth person to just vet reasonableness. Is this for you? Because first thing I would ask them is, have you seen other married at first sights? Have you seen the couples that don't make it and the reasons as to why? Have you seen some of the craziness that has gone on before you apply for the show? So, and I would probably even go through some of those couples and say, hey, what would you have done if you had been in this couple? Or what would you do if you were faced this? Because we've seen some of this before. And the not liking, and this is the last thing I'm gonna say on that, the not liking thing, we saw it most with Jamie Otis, who is now the um, host of Unfiltered, because her husband, she didn't think her husband was attractive at all. She was crying, curled up on a ball, but she got over it and they moved on. Now, I will say, it just to be fair, that I believe that we as women, we can adjust to that better than men. So I know that's a little different because, I don't know, I don't think we've ever really seen where, oh, um, two seasons ago or one season ago, the couple didn't make it, but um, the the husband didn't find the wife attractive. I forgot their names and he actually moved out the house. He didn't, I mean, he didn't even move in with her, um, but they didn't make it, but but he, he could never get over that. And which is really interesting because she was a very pretty young lady to me. It was a Caucasian couple and she was thin and all this kind of stuff. And I, I can't even remember what he did not find attractive about her but you know beauty is in the eye of the beholder so you know we can't measure that but I do feel bad for Chris because I do believe that he does not like Paige because she is dark skinned and or because she is not skinny you know like a stick figure she's not fat either but she's not like that stick thin because those are the only two things that he could have seen when he was standing at the altar I actually did like his vows though, because I felt like there was a part in his vows where he said that he would grow to love her, you know, like no one else has has ever. And, and I think that's reasonable. I think that love is something that, that grows. And my opinion is that love is an action and it's not always a feeling and that you choose to love. So I, I, really, and I really thought that was reasonable of him that he said that he would grow to love her uh yeah so that's all i'm gonna say about the wedding i can't even remember pages i can't even remember pages vows but you know they seem normal i think that i'm just focusing on him because you know he he's the talk of the town right now so he is the talk of the town but i usually like to see the vows and kind of like go over them because i like to see who honors and who does not honor the vow that they, you know, promised before they met the person or the day they met them. And then, you know, we see them later on and the vows go out the window. So I usually like to really um, talk about the vows that they make in order for to see if they actually are true to them. Things, three things in the reception I thought was interesting is the first thing is I thought it was really interesting when they were on the dance floor and he asked Paige, where are you are you a tomboy are you uh are you high maintenance or are you a tomboy and she said i'm somewhere in between and then he said um she said well you're just gonna have to love me for who i am all of me and he said yes i'm gonna have to love you for who you are all of you and she said you don't have to and then he said but i choose to and i just thought that is it, That it is a choice. It is a choice, love is a choice. It is not a feeling. We can fall in and out of love, but we, being committed to someone, I really believe that it is a choice and you have to consciously make that decision 
in order to love someone, be committed to them, be faithful to them, and you know, whatever that else that entails. So I, I, I was really having really good vibes for that. The worst thing to me in the reception was, I didn't have a problem with Chris asking Paige, um, was she a virgin? I mean, like they're married. So I really don't think anything is off limits when you're married. Um, and you know, I understand they're married, but you know, they just met each other, but they're married. So like for me, I, I don't know. And maybe I am an open book and I don't want to project on Paige, but I'm an open book. So like, just ask me, like, if you want to know, just ask me, I'm not really going to be offended because you asked me a question. I can say, no, I don't want to answer if I don't want to. And she did say no. And then he kind of pressured her into answering, but, and then she did. So I, I don't know. I don't think that any question is really off limits, especially when you are married, they're about to go spend their honeymoon together. And, you know, he just kind of want to know what he's getting into. So I didn't have him, I didn't have a problem with him asking her that. And, you know, evidently she, I mean, she's not a virgin. She made that pretty clear. So, I mean, I guess maybe that was his sign that maybe he could get the honeymoon baby if he wanted to since she had that experience before. But what did bother me is him saying that he, um, him saying that he had fasted for three days. Now, in the Christian realm, fasting is a really big deal. We will fast and, you know, what you can do, Daniel's fast, whatever. But he said he had fasted for three days and that he had not masturbated in three days. And I don't know if he was fasting only from masturbation or masturbation and food, because usually, you know, fasting is from food. But that made me think that maybe he has a sex addiction or some kind of, yeah, I'm not, I, allegedly. I don't know for sure, I guess I should say that. But that gave me that thought because three days is not a long time. And yeah, that, that was kind of weird. If I was Paige, that would have, that would have rang red flags to me because yeah, that's, that's just weird. And we know that, you know, she told Pastor Cal later on, it's already been out there that they had sex like every night. So I would be kind of concerned about that because of that statement. And then his dad, now his dad was totally inappropriate with Paige. Like that was like, I don't know how I can say inappropriate. I, it was inappropriate. His dad should not have, yeah, that was inappropriate. I think that his mom also felt like it was inappropriate because like she was, you know, she didn't look like she was very happy about that statement either. But I did have, I didn't have a problem with the dad saying that he wanted grandchildren, like which grandparents don't. But when he just, you know, you need to be there and pleasing her and all this kind of pleasing him and not go a long time. I thought that was like, I thought that was an inappropriate conversation. And when the, the father, the minister and some of the guys were with Chris and they was talking about how fine she was and laughing and all this kind of stuff. I thought that was inappropriate. I mean, I don't know, like, maybe if there was some they were young guys and they were chris's age but for a dad and and, I, and the minister he didn't say anything but he was just standing there laughing too but he didn't say anything but that bothered me because i don't want my pastor yeah pastor don't don't yeah, don't yeah don't joke like that yeah no i i think i would have felt better if it had been chris's age group and his friends but that these old men in my opinion, kind of looking at this young girl. Um, yeah, no, that was inappropriate. And the next day or whatever, yeah, it must've been the next day when she went to breakfast with them and she sat by the dad. I wanted to scream at the TV and say, move girl, don't sit by him. Like, you know, he is a dirty old man, but um, you know, yeah. I, I, I thought the dad was totally inappropriate in his, comments yeah and I, I didn't like that the pastor was standing there even though he did not say a word but he I don't know it seemed like he co-signed it I feel like he should have took his church member because I'm assuming that they all go to his church and that was yeah I didn't like that at all the conversation with the girlfriends when he said that Paige is not a trophy wife I really feel like that conversation came out of the conversations that he had for one thing when they were on the dance floor Paige made a comment that they had 
talk more than they danced. So I feel like that they probably talked about a lot. Only one thing that we heard was that he needs to accept her for how she is. But, you know, they were sitting at the table. I'm sure they talked for more than what we heard. They're just giving us sound bites of the things that they think are gonna be important for us to know moving forward. And plus, I do think they're casting him as the villain. So they wanna get the sound bites to get the audience all riled up, which they've been successful at because Chris is getting slammed on the internet. And I feel sorry for him, especially as his sister in Christ. I feel, I mean, I feel like people are not giving him a fair chance and because he is real and authentic and sometimes when that's in our face, we can't take it. So I really think he's getting a bad rap. So Chris, if you're listening, you know, I don't, I think you're being, I think you are t being taken the wrong way because you are honest and vulnerable. And you know what, keep being you because sometimes it's hard for people to just be that authentic um, of a person and to really tell them their true feelings to people, especially guys. So I feel like Chris is really getting hit heavy because he is expressing himself. And I think that that is just not something that we find common in men. And somebody was like, well, it's how he says he's rude about it. But I don't think that he is rude about it. He is in a conversation. He was in a conversation with the young ladies. And I don't think that his trophy wife comment was outside of the realm of the conversation that they were talking about. And I don't think that he meant that Paige is not a trophy wife. I don't think that he meant that as a negative thing. Usually when we hear somebody say, oh, she's a trophy wife, we think that's negative because we feel like that means that she just looks pretty and she has no brains. I think that he was saying that Paige is not a trophy wife in terms of she has her own thing going on. She has her own life going on. Like she has herself self together. So I don't know. I don't think that he could have won either way. I did. I was glad that the friends did not share that with Paige at that time so that Paige could just kind of make her own decision and enjoy her honeymoon. And I think our friend named Brianna, she said that, you know, she believes that Chris is a good guy, but he just says things are that are inappropriate. I thought she was spot on. I really thought that she was spot on in getting to know who he was. One thing I did miss. Now, this is another thing. Oh, also when they got married and they were sitting in the honeymoon area and they were just talking and he brought up his girlfriend. Now the tattoo, I didn't have a problem with that because Paige asked him, what, what, what made you get the tattoo? Like what made you get the tattoo? And that's what made him get the tattoo. He was trying to cover up a tattoo that he had of his ex fiance's name. I, 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 why not tell her that in that conversation? We see last season, I forgot the really shy guy and he didn't, he ended up not liking the girl and they end up like not being together. But he said that he learned something. Uh, her friends told him something about her in the reception. And from that moment, he just had that in the back of his mind. So he doesn't know what somebody's gonna say at the reception. I had no problem with him telling her about the ex-girlfriend and that he had this tattoo that he was trying to cover up from the ex-girlfriend. I thought that that was appropriate. I know some people don't, but what I thought was inappropriate is Paige clearly tried to change the conversation. When she said, do you like dogs or do you have dogs? That was kind of like, you know, it's cold outside. You know, just like, you just want to, Whatever we talk about, we just want to get off this subject and just move on about our, you know, wedding. And he didn't take that cue. And he mentioned his girlfriend again and that his girlfriend had a dog. Now, I thought that was, that was totally inappropriate. She was trying to move on from the conversation. And I do like that Paige, I felt like she was sticking up for herself when she was like, well, do you want to be here? Like, is this where you want to be? You know, so I, I do think that that was another red flag for her. She said it was like yellow, but I didn't think that that was appropriate. And, and I kind of thought that maybe he did that because he didn't get the reaction that he was looking for. Like she didn't give him any reaction from it when he is telling her 
that he had this ex-fiance. She didn't even ask him any questions. So I thought maybe because he didn't get the reaction that he was looking for or that he thought he should get, maybe he wanted to continue that conversation a little more. But I'm not sure about it. One other thing that I noticed about that particular episode is when they were going to their room, and it was a very quick shot, when they were going to their, their room, Paige was holding her shoes in her hand, and can't we all relate? And he was carrying the train of her dress, and I don't know, it looks like they were either getting on or off, looked like they were getting off the elevator. And he said, oh, I got you, babe. And I just thought that was really cute. Cause I think that although we are just seeing a little bit of like the little snapshots, I think that he makes her feel good about who she is in some way, because that's how we are comfortable to give ourselves over to a man. And I can see little glimpses of that, even when they got into the room and all the other guys, the, the girls were, I'm gonna get out of my dress. And the girl would ask the guy to help her. But when Paige said, I'm gonna get out of my dress, he said, let me help you. And he even, somehow they were in the bathroom together. I don't know for how long, but there was some shots of him helping her in the bathroom. And I don't know, I think Paige does need a lot of uh, reassurance because she said, well, what do you think about my like night outfit and everything? And he was like, well, I haven't even looked at it. Let me, you know, let me see. So I really had hope for them when that episode went out. Of course, the next morning, <sighs> hope kind of died out a little bit. <laughs> but when that episode went off and I thought that there was some really good moments where I could see why that she would be able to fall for him and it really looked like he was going to make a turnaround in terms of how he felt for her. But then, uh, oh, Chris. So then the next day we see they wake up and he's gone. Now, one thing I would say is I'm like, Paige, um, come here. Like, I don't know if that had happened to me. I would order my own stuff. Like when I he got back, I would have been finished eating. I would have been dressed. I would have been looking cute. Like, I don't know. I probably would have just pretend like it didn't faze me as much. So I really thought that she needed to pull herself together. But then I don't know. I mean, you know, maybe she really thought something happened to him and she was like kind of worried. I don't know if she really knew it was because of her, but you know, he comes and he tells her that he's not very attracted to her. And um, I didn't have a problem with him telling her that. See, I like to know, tell me where you are. I can deal with if I know where you are. Now, I think that, I mean, it looks bad because he's doing this on camera because they are on a reality TV show. But if that was just them and them two sitting in the house and he told her that, you know, that I'm not very attracted to you, I mean, I would want to know that. I, I really would. And, you know, my thing is, is what you want to do moving forward. If if he was willing to stay and work out that issue with me, then I really would. And, and I don't think it's because I have low self-esteem or whatever people are saying about Paige, but it's because, you know, you don't know what you're going to get when you are married at first sight. This is what you signed up for. As a Christian, I believe that marriage is forever. And if the guy is not beating you or cheating on you, um, then those are reasons, biblical reasons, where you need to just like jump ship. But, you know, then say that if he does not think that you are beautiful. And I think that beauty is something that grows on people. So I know I may not have the popular opinion on that. And, you know, maybe I don't know. I don't know. I, just, I don't know. So. That, that's really just what I think. I think that it, it is, she, I would have been hurt though. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that I wouldn't be hurt. And the thing about it is, one thing I hate for him is that even if they were to stay together, like that's always in your mind. That's always in your head, especially as women. You know, we already have criticism to be all beautiful and whatever. And, and I just think that that's, like that would always be in the back of my head that he doesn't, he doesn't find me, you know, he doesn't find me attractive. And 
that's the whole thing about when you say something. I do like that he was honest, so I don't have a problem with that if that's who he is. But you do have to be careful with what you say because once you put it out there, like it's out there and you just can't take it back. You can't say, well, no, you know, I did, you know, he tried to walk it back and telling her how he thinks he's, she's beautiful later on. But, you know, that would be always just in the back of her head. So for that reason, I do feel bad for Paige. But I still would like to know. I, I don't know. I When I saw this scene, it really made me think about Keith and Iris. And if you guys are avid Married at, Married at First Sight watchers, you know Keith and Iris. Keith, um, Iris was a virgin, virgin. Iris was a virgin. And Keith had a really hard time with that. He had a really struggle. He treated her very, very nice. And she made it evident through the whole thing that she, you know, really wanted this marriage and all this kind of stuff. And she would work hard in order to do it. And in my opinion, I felt like Keith was not really a good communicator. And I really felt like on decision day, when he said no, and she said yes, that Iris was kind of like, taken aback and caught off guard. So I just, I don't know, I just would prefer for somebody to kind of tell me along the way. I mean, you can't do anything about the way you look. So there's nothing that Paige can do about this issue. But, you know, sometimes if people tell you like what's wrong, you can determine if you are willing to work on it or not. I remember when I was getting married and we went through marriage counseling and they told us to list like our expectations. And then your spouse was gonna tell you like if that was something that they would do, there was something that they wouldn't do. So they got to say whether based on what you wanted, if that person was willing to do that or if they weren't. And I just, I just really like for the cards to be on the table. I do feel sorry for Paige because you know, who wants to be rejected? And, and who doesn't want, you know, to, to feel beautiful, especially by her husband, which is very interesting because Paige has the two dads. She has a dad and she has a stepdad. And I don't know, I, I think that they seem like they both adored her at the wedding and everything like that. So, you know, hopefully they have told her multiple times how beautiful she is and, and that kind of thing where this won't uh, affect her as much. And, you know, just from my own perspective, I know I have a struggle with that just because of my upbringing and what I've been told about being dark skinned and all that kind of stuff. And you know, that's not the standard of beauty. And it does, it, it affects you. So for that reason, I do feel sorry for her. But we did notice a change in Paige's attitude when she came from the hairdresser because you guys know, going to the hairdresser is like going to a therapy session. You know, when you, Put your head back in the dryer you know that's kind of like laying on the couch <laughs> so she probably went to the hairdresser she probably called some of her girlfriends over possibly even her mom too and they kind of pumped her up and walked her through it and you know because i don't know when i go to the hairdresser and i have an issue it, it does make things I, it is really i believe that the hairdresser is like a therapy session so she went to therapy got her energy from her girls, came back with a new release on life and just ready to dive in and try again. And I thought that that was, that was, you know, I thought that was really good and really nice. And I really liked her attitude because I think she should really stick it out. Even after she finds out that he has a baby on the way, I still feel that she should stick it out even though I've seen the reaction, you know, we're already to that point, but I, I still think that she should trust God and just, you know, see see what he has for her in the midst of this situation. So, so now we go to Las Vegas, which I just thought, I mean, you know, it's we're in COVID-19, so we're, you know, they can't go across the country or to this romantic cunning room place, but I actually don't know what they're gonna do in Vegas. I have been to Vegas quite a few times. I'm not a gambler or anything like that. So maybe they will give me some ideas on what to do. One couple went to see the dolphins, which was really cool. So 
when I'm in Vegas next time, maybe I'll try to do some of those things. But this is where we see Chris and Paige the next morning and I guess he gets a call. I wonder how he found out because some people are saying, I wonder did some people are saying on vlogs that when, oh, you know what? She goes to dinner with his family. We can't leave that part out. She goes to dinner with his family. And did you see the mama? Did he have something to drink? Boy, the mamas will be taken up for their sons, huh? Like, does it matter? Like, your son was rude and disrespectful. And he, you know, had his way with me. Yeah, I did not like the mom's answer. The aunt looked at her like, really? Like, that's that's your answer? So I did like the aunt's, the aunt's reaction. I'm always looking behind, like seeing what everybody else's reaction is. I did like the dad, that the dad said that that was just not the way he raised his son and that I, he didn't give him no slack. I still think that they gave Chris slack when they confronted him and he's all like, well, you know, I was just trying to see if it would grow. That is like the worst I mean, yeah, I mean, I do think that they gave him a little too much slack at that point. I feel like they could have, you know, kept on with it, but he's grown. So like, what you gonna do with him? So like, I don't feel like there's nothing that, I didn't think that they were hard enough on him, but he's grown. So what are you gonna do? I didn't like that he got mad at Paige because she shared with her because she's trying to find support and answers any way that she can and you know whether she's gonna go to her guy friends and ask them their opinion i think he was just embarrassed i think that he has i don't believe him when he says that he has not talked about sex to his parents especially his dad because how his dad knows that this is what you need you might have told him that you didn't get that in another relationship so i totally didn't believe him on that i think that he was embarrassed so he didn't want her to tell any of her friends, her guy friends, and he didn't want her to tell his family because he was embarrassed. He knew he was wrong and that was shameful. If you don't like the girl, then then let her stay whole. You know what, just let her stay whole. And I do fault him for that. I don't think that that was nice at all. I think it was very disrespectful in, in, in that sense. I, I, I don't even have a problem with him having sex with her moving forward after he told her because now she gets to make a decision as to how she wants to move in that relationship but i do think that you know having sex with her and then telling her that he did not find her attractive i think that was i think that was unloving i i, I really do there's just no other way to say it so i thought that was very disrespectful of him and i did feel really bad for paige um, in that um, and if I was Paige it would have just stopped like I wouldn't have had I can't I can't anymore I, but you know hey maybe she feeling herself too and she like hey you trying to get yours I'm trying to get mine too so maybe it's not about him maybe it's about her self-fulfillment as well in terms of that intimacy that she needs for her release so I don't know but I would not I probably I I I would have had to stop. Like, we we need to stop and we need to go back and now we need to build this friendship in order to move forward. All right, so now we are at this week's episode and we see him with the producer saying that he does not want to tell Paige. So I wonder how he found out because what I had, what, what the blogs are saying is that his ex-fiance came when he, told Paige that morning before they left for Las Vegas that he did not find her attractive, that the reason why he was downstairs getting breakfast for so long was because his ex-girlfriend had called him and found out that he had got married and her family was coming to the hotel to beat him up or whatever, you know. So, um, I, so I'm wondering now, this is the next day, he's in Vegas, he's at the Vegas hotel did she call him and tell him on the phone or did she tell him the night before or like how did she how did she tell him that yeah I, I would I want to know I'm just that nosy to know how did he find out how did he find out 
the news? Like, was it a phone call or? Yeah. So I really want to know how he found out the news. Oh, like, oh, yeah, I want to know. And it's, yeah, I want to know how he found out about the baby. But he is sitting at the table. He tells him that he didn't want to, to, to reveal it. And he's sitting at the table and telling her that he has something to tell her, but he doesn't want to tell her. I thought it was very interesting that when she got up and she ran out that they showed us the the cameras. I, I love to see like the back behind. I like to see production because I thought that people are like literally standing beside them with a camera, but it looks like that there's just a camera sitting in the room and that they're not right there at the table with them, which is why where I can see where people can be more free to talk and just have their conversation because the one producer was in the room and it looks like the other producer was like on the way on the other side. No, no, it looked like a closet, kind of like in the closet and then that camera was just standing there. So that was very interesting to me. But I do think that if you do not, don't tell somebody you know something and you're not gonna tell them. I, I just hate that and it's just rude and disrespectful when you, it's like, I got a secret and I'm not gonna tell you. Well, then don't tell me that you have a secret. I wonder what's Chris saying. I know he didn't wanna tell her because who would wanna tell anybody that, especially three days into your marriage. Like, that's just not something you wanna tell. But I don't know if he was saying, I don't wanna tell her or I don't wanna tell her in front of the cameras. So, I, I mean, who, that's just embarrassing. And I do believe that Chris thinks he has a brand and all of this kind of stuff. So I do think that he is embarrassed because it will hurt his brand, you know, people already talking. And so I don't know if he really didn't want to tell her period, or if he did not want to tell her on camera, but what would you guys have done? See, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have ran out of the room like Paige. Cause I would have been like, Oh, okay. Like you, you got something. So <laughs> I would have started 20 questions because that's just like, that's just like my personality. I would have started like 20 questions. So is your mom okay? So is it is it your grandparents or are, are, are they okay? Did you lose your job? Is something going on with your business? Did one of your employees quit? Like, <laughs> like did your dog die? Like, <laughs> like everything going in my mind that would have been like really bad. I would have just, I would have just asked him like, he would have just like, look, no, none of that my girl is pregnant or whatever, because I think you'd be like, look, I am tired of this 20 questions. I've just been eating. Oh, you know, when somebody tells you that they have something that they're not going to tell you, you begin to think about what it is. Like, what is it that this person has that they're not going to tell me? So I would have just been like, oh, okay. Is, is your mom okay? Is it the family? Is it your job? <laughs> so, you know, he runs, he tells her whatever in the bathroom, which was interesting. I never seen, you know, you hear him say, take off your mic and all that kind of stuff. So I love to see that behind the production kind of thing. Then she goes and tells Brianna. And of course, you know, Brianna thinks she should, you know, I was glad Brianna didn't say it to her though. She was kind of like, I will support you. And I, I like that because I like that in a friend. Sometimes as women, we are talking to ourselves even though we have our friends sitting in front of us. We are talking through our own problem. Usually if I'm talking to, a, if a friend is talking to me about a problem, I usually ask them like, okay, so do you want me to comment? Do you want me to listen? Like, what are you looking for in this conversation? And usually I will not give somebody my opinion unless they say, what do you think? Because sometimes, they don't want your opinion. They want to just, they just want your support. They just want your encouragement and they do not want your opinion. So I was glad that Brianna was there for her. And I was actually glad that Chris talked to Vincent and kind of got that out for, you know, for guys. Cause I don't know, maybe, was, maybe it's just the guys that I'm around. I don't really see them talking a lot or expressing their feelings or all those kind of things. So, so when I see that there are some men that do that, that just really excites me. And I really like that, that bonding. And I felt like Vincent was a really good ear just to be there and to listen. And then we see where he tells the group, um, 
and they didn't know how to respond, of course. And then when Virginia comes and they repeat it, I, I, I it's interesting because Virginia said, is it yours? And he acts like that was just the worst question ever. That's my question. Is it yours? Like if somebody is, sound like y'all have broke up. I I didn't think that was a bad question. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I did go through my mind. Is it yours? Yeah, you know, they did just meet. He had a point there. And I do, so I didn't really have a problem with Virginia asking that question, although he was very offended by it. But I did have a, a, a problem with the husband and I can't remember Virginia's husband's name, but I feel like Chris said, can we just not talk about it and can we move on? And I feel like he just kept, kept talking about it. And I think that that was rude and disrespectful. It's something that Chris did not have to share. I don't know if um, production made him share it or not, but something that he didn't have to share. But he did, I guess, kind of, I don't I don't want to say production made him because he did look at Paige and say, should I share? And she said, they're going to find out anyway. You might as well go ahead and tell them. And I believe in that because a lot of times in reality TV shows and stuff like that, they say you have to get ahead of the narrative. So you want to be the one to tell your own story. So I do believe that, you know, I do agree with Paige that go ahead and tell it. They're going to find out, might as well find out like from you. So I thought that was good. I did think it was very interesting that he walked away and went to cry and all this kind of stuff. And I think that he was crying because, you know, he's not, he wasn't the center of attention. His, his news was negative and everybody else was having a good time and happy and him and Paige are struggling. So I do believe, I, I don't know, I kind of felt like he was crying because he was not the center of attention and that his news was negative. Um, in light, a baby's never negative, but you know, in light of the whole context of the situation, children are always a joy. But I did think that he was crying because of that reason. But what bothered me about Paige is that she's just, okay, well, what's wrong? What do you mean what's, like, you know what's wrong? And I don't know no men who really want you, like, all up in their face, wanting them to talk when you see that they are just trying to deal with the emotion. I just, I, I just, you know, I think she should have just went over there, sat with him in support, been quiet, and then went to their rooms and not even, I, she did ask him if he could handle it going back over there, but just, just take your man and just, just go, just go, you know, he's having a very rough time, which he should be, because it is a big deal, you got this little bitty baby, he thinks babies are his brand, you know, he evidently longs to be a dad, because I've never really, I mean, he talks about it a lot, which to me is not normal, for most guys so he really wants to be a dad and now he is married I think that I think that he's I think he's really struggling I think he's really struggling with the two and even next week when we see that he tells her that he's still in love with his girlfriend and all of that I still don't think Paige should leave I think she should walk it out see what happens because I don't know I just don't think you should leave your marriage and guys can you got married at first sight you don't know what you're gonna get so marriage is not easy I don't know I have been married over 20 years and marriage is not easy you have a lot of ups and downs maybe for some couples maybe for some couples it is I will say um I have not seen a lot of marriages that are just easy um, most couples myself included that I know Marriage is a journey and it's a daily sacrifice. It's a daily compromise. It's a daily dying to yourself. Sometimes you don't think they're cute and cuddly and handsome. And sometimes you think that they are the world. It just, you know, that's why I feel like love is a commitment and it's a decision and it's not a feeling. And I feel like I have been married over 20 years because 
I'm not looking for him. I am not looking to him for happiness. I get happiness is within myself and is found through Christ. And he is not looking for, to me for his happiness. Happiness for him is found in the Lord, in Christ. And then we have decided that we're going to be committed to each other. And love is a decision. Love is a decision. And I'm sure, you know, there's points in our marriage where he thinks I'm more attractive than other times because my weight has fluctuated. Um, you know, so, you know, I don't look like I did when we got married, like the grandmother said. So I don't know. I think Paige should stay. But my last comment for this is, I was having a conversation with a church member who about Married at First Sight and Chris, and they made the statement that Chris is not safe. What do we think about that? Because in my opinion, salvation is based on our belief in the Lord, not because we say crazy things. So I'm gonna read you what I believe salvation is. And then we're gonna, uh, so I will read you what I believe salvation is, and then we'll talk about it if we think Chris is not saved because of what we've seen. I'm saying that Chris is saved because he appears to be, that appears to be what he is saying, that he is a man of God. So I am saying that he is saved because I feel like he has said that he is saved. So let's look at the word and see if we, we are going to read John 16, 17, and 18. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only son. Now, when we talk about belief, I do believe there is a real faith and a sad faith. And what I mean by that is that just because we know, belief to me is a following of Christ. Because when you truly believe that Christ is the son of God, that he is the way to eternal life, you are going to want to follow him. It says in the word that you will know them by the fruits that they bear. So those people who say they're saved, but they give no regard to the Bible, they don't read the Bible, they don't follow scripture, I feel like they have a sad faith because the Lord says that there will be a day that comes when you will not come knocking and I will say, I know you not. I'm going to go on the basis to say that Chris truly believes in the Lord Jesus Christ and that he is trying to walk in the way of Christ. That is going to be the basis of this last little discussion. So what in, Chris's, what in Chris's behavior would think that he is not saved because he doesn't like Paige? That's, that's not true. He does like her. He does not like the way she looks because he talked about sex at the table, because he had sex with her and when he didn't like her, because he had a baby outside of marriage, because he called her a because he said she's a trophy wife. Those things can be seen as rude or disrespectful, or maybe he, you know, talks, he, he talks before he thinks, but I really don't believe that anything that he has done would indicate that he does not have a belief in the Lord. Now, did he sin? Yes, he did. He had sex outside of marriage in that, in the Bible, that is contrary to what God would want. But don't we all sin? Don't we all, I mean, are you loving all the time? Are you, are you gentle? Are you patient? Are you kind? We all have sinned, even as Christians, and come short of the glory of God. There are some nasty saved Christians who have a very bad attitude, but that does not mean that the person is not saved. They need some more work. They need to tap into the Holy Spirit. 
So that is one of my pet peeves is when we do things wrong as Christians, the first thing somebody says is they're not saved. Now, I think that if you are perpetual in sin, you live in sin day after day and you have no repentance for it, you have no conscience about it, then you might wanna check yourself because then you may not be really hearing the Holy Spirit because it lives within us. So you may not have the Holy Spirit, but I don't know. I, I really see Chris as wanting to do the right thing in Christ. So I don't see that anything that he's done on the show would indicate that he is not saved. And I feel like a lot of times when people who are not Christians, they, and they're with Christians, that they feel that that's what we are. We're judging their behavior and everything they do, you know, we're, we're judging. But I feel like we're all a work in progress. Now, do I think we all should be pursuing Christ, pursuing his word, growing in him, growing in his word, growing in our likeness of Christ because we are made in his image, yes. But I don't think because we're not perfect people and, you know, that we're not saved. So I think that Chris is saved. He may need to work on his delivery as Paige has indicated. I still hope that they make it. I'm kind of nervous because I really feel that the Lord may have something, a role for Paige to play um, in this little one's life that is coming ahead. And sometimes we just don't know it because we are not able to walk it out. But as Christians, our whole purpose is to glorify God and to serve him and to glorify him. I do believe that it will be hard for Paige only because it appears that she has had this experience before. It sounds like she lived with a guy. So she lived with a guy and she's basically the stepmom to his, to his daughter. So that might give her some pause and because of that experience, she may say no on decision day. And then Chris, I think that he is gonna have a hard time because I do think that he wants to be married and I believe that he would be willing to stay with Paige, but I believe that he does want kids really bad. And for this person to be with his child is gonna cause a problem. And I think that many men go through the issue. It sounds like on the clip for next week, he said, I don't want another man raising my kid. And I think that that is the sentiment of a lot of men. Um, and I mean, I don't have a problem with that because I do want to see African-American men um, stand up and raise their own children. So with that, um, if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And let me know in the chat, what do you think? Do you think that Chris is unsaved because of his actions? Let's talk about it in the chat. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And remember to live with intention. Be intentional. See you in the next video.